What's going on guys, it's Dem here from demsec.co.uk and uh, I actually had a question in from Colin Wren. Colin Wren wanted to know how I actually set up the um, closed network within VMware which I used on my pivoting tutorial. Uh, and instead of just showing you how to do that, because it's actually so simple, it almost, almost doesn't beggar a tutorial, I thought I'd actually go ahead and show you guys how to set up your own um, virtual closed network. And that way you can test hacking tools and stuff like that without risking your actual network. And I basically went ahead and made this in the first place. Because I have a lot of computers on my network. I have parents' computers, siblings' computers, my own computers, servers. And essentially I didn't want to end up screwing them all because I thought, hmm, what does this button do? So, what we're going to go ahead and do is first show you how to set up the virtual machines and how I personally do it. And then we'll show you how to network them all with, so you have an internet connection in there, but you don't actually leak any packets into your, into your home network, which could cause damage. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's get to it. As you can see here, I've got a VMware workstation open, and I just wanted to show you how I lay out my VMs. So I've got my general use VMs here, and these are the ones that I pretty much use on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, my Ubuntu uh, VM here, I actually always have suspended, so I can basically bring it up at any time and use it. Um, what I, basically, up at top, these are just my VMs which aren't used for hacking. In here, I have a folder called Hacking Lab, and as you can see, it's empty. And the reason that is is because after I'm done hacking, I kind of just empty that out, because usually if I'm playing with viruses and stuff, I want to get rid of them off my system as quick as possible for obvious reasons. But I also have this folder here called VM Templates. And what you can actually do in here, or what I personally do, is I'll actually make one version of a VM, which I'll use as essentially the clean image. So I won't install anything on that, I won't edit that at all, that will just be the base stock image. So if we actually just boot this up here. I should also talk about system requirements. You will probably need a lot of RAM, obviously, because for each VM you're going to need RAM, um, at least 2 gigs per VM, I'd say, especially if you're doing hacking. Maybe not for the targets, if you're just running Windows XP boxes, you can probably get by with 128 megs per target but if you're actually like for my backtrack box over here that's I think that's got four gigs in it yeah four gig of RAM in there and uh, that's because I want to keep things fast because I'm running things like Metasploit which use quite a lot of system resources so as you can see here I've got a base image of a virtual of Windows 7 uh, I can't remember what I've actually set the password to I don't know what I've set the password to in that but uh, I can probably find out in a second, but that'll be the base image. And what you do from there is if I wanted to create a version of that where I wanted to hack it, if I just let it shut down, what you do is actually right click on it and click manage, then clone. Next, uh, the current state of the virtual machine and create a full clone. Why you want to create a full clone is because if you create a linked clone, it actually affects your base template, which you don't want to do. You want to have a clean version and then the versions that you're actually working on. You want those to be completely separate. So I'm going to just click next on a full clone and then we're just going to call it hacking target Windows 7 number 1. I like to be descriptive when it comes to my virtual machines just so then I know how to keep them separated and stuff like that. So once I've got this VM cloned, uh, I'll show you how I actually set up the network and it's actually surprisingly easy. Okay, so that virtual machine is now done cloning. So what you're going to do now is just click close and it'll probably put it, yeah, it doesn't put it in the folder by default. So all you're going to do is simply drag and drop it into that folder. So now I've got this target set up, we're actually going to edit the virtual machine settings. And uh, this network adapter is where you want to pay close attention. So what a NAT actually does is, as it says, it use, it's used to share the host IP address. It's the same thing as your router does. It basically uses my physical machine as a path to the internet, a gateway. Uh, bridged is where it essentially, well, bridges to my 
physical network adapter and gets its own IP from the router. So in that case, it'd be essentially a separate computer from mine. It'll be a complete, as far as the router and the network's concerned, it'd be a completely separate computer. But what we actually want to do is custom, and we want a specific virtual network. So these virtual networks here uh, can all be configured. And if you actually go to start and then uh, run the uh, virtual network editor, this is just go open on my other screen here, so I'll just drag it over. Um, as you can see, you can actually edit the virtual networks. So as you can see, these networks here um, don't. There's basically only needed networks here have been configured, and as you can see here, this is a host-only network. So VM net one is used to basically only interface with the physical machine. Um, if I bring that back up. VMNet2 is a custom network which uh, is host only, so connect VMs internally in a private network, uh, and that's what we're going to want to do. So I've already got VMNet configured, but to save us having to manually set up IP addresses, which you would have to do, we're actually just going to do use a local DHCP service to uh, distribute IP addresses, and then we'll just go with whatever range it gives us. That just saves us having to set up DHCP. DHCP on a virtual server or manually configure IP addresses. So once we set that, we'll just hit apply, and all it'll do is just restart the virtual network adapters. And then, as you can see, we're going to go with VMNet 2. Each of these VMNets, uh, if you don't configure them, is automatically a separate network. So any VMs that are in VMNet, I don't know, let's pick a random one, VMNet 6, we'll all be able to talk together. So if I set up 6 VMs all on VMNet 6, all those will be able to talk to each other, but they wouldn't be able to access any other computers on the network. But uh, just for the example, I'm going to go with VMNet 2. And what we're actually going to do is add another network adapter, and this is how we're going to connect to the internet. So we're actually going to connect another network adapter, and we're actually going to go with NAT. Uh, but what we're going to change is this connected at power on because we don't want this adapter connected by default because this, oh, I hit enter there on my numpad so that's going to automatically, yeah, it's automatically added that there um, if I just reopen that. Uh, we don't want it to be connected at power on because that essentially connects the VM to our physical network which is the whole point we're trying to uh, beat, I guess. We don't want the... VMs being able to attack physical computers on the network. So connected at power on, we're going to have that set to disabled by unchecking it. But the custom network will have automatically connected. So now we've got that set up. Uh, we've got our. We'll remove the floppy drive just for the. Oh, it's not connected anyway. But um, that's basically all we have to do in terms of the network. So now every time we create a uh, new virtual machine, or if we just move the Backtrack 5 into the hacking lab folder. If I uh, set the network adapter to VMNet2, now my Backtrack bots can see this Windows 7 box and uh, if we actually just power them both on I guess. Like I said guys, you're probably going to want a computer with plenty of RAM for this. I've actually got 16 gigs of RAM in this machine and probably a pretty powerful processor. As well I've also got one of them in this one. I've got an i7 3770K at 3.5 gigahertz. So while these are booting up, um, so as, as you can see, this is the one that got used in the previous demonstration about how to stay uh, hidden whilst hacking. If we just start X in there. Massive Windows 7 box booting up. So now with the uh, DHCP service, these both of these VMs should get IP addresses. And as I mentioned before, I can't actually remember the password to this one. That's where I just set it to password. Seems like something I'd do. Hmm, what is my password? Did I say it to my oh, say it to my proper password? That's strange. <laughs> Okay, so we've got into this box here, and this is going to yep, install the network adapter. So it's saying there's no internet access, which is to be expected, but if we uh, run command prompt and do IP config, we actually do get an IP address from that range that was specified in the adapter settings, and uh, 
if we just do an IF config here, yeah, we get one from the same range. So if we actually just try and ping each other just to prove that they can talk, uh, we'll, we'll ping from the backtrack box because we're uberlit hackers. And what did we? What did it give this one? It gave this one one two nine. And which ah, I know what's not working there. I'm guessing the firewall's enabled. I'm guessing. If not, then I'm just silly. Ah, yeah. Turn. We'll turn off the firewall for now. Just so the pings go through. Yep, yeah, started receiving pings, no problem. So these net these are actually on a completely separate network. Like if I open up command prompt on my physical machine and I'll just drag it over. Um do IP config. You can see my IP address is one nine two one six eight one one oh three if we try ping in that. network is unreachable which is what we wanted so now if we want to actually get an internet connection in here what we can do is down here you actually have your virtual network adapters if we actually connect that that connects us to the NAT network so if we want to quickly go online yep I'm using an explorer because that's all I've got installed don't kill me <laughs> just allow that to work because we all know how fast internet explorer is <laughs> you should see hotmail's coming up there and that's how you connect to the internet but you must remember once you've done what downloading whatever you need to download to disconnect the NAT adapter because otherwise these attacks will run straight through and now we've actually got these NATed I'm going to show you that I can run attacks which will actually kill a whole network and uh, basically have no problems so this attack is what I'm going to be covering next video, Flood Router 6. And um, we're just going to send it out on Ethernet 0. Alright, now we're going to cancel that. And this Windows 7 machine is going to be pretty in a lot of pain. Yeah, as you can see, it's slowed down a lot already. And I'm hoping they haven't got through to my physical machine. Otherwise, this is going to be an interesting fit. So if we just do IP config, yeah, it slowed it down like hell. And this is the attack that we're going to be covering very soon. It's essentially where to cr crash every single computer on a network. And as you can see, it's essentially assigned it an absolute ass load of IPv6 addresses. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've found it somewhat useful. Um, that's as far as, as, far, as far as simplicity goes, it really is like 1 out of 10 on the, no, 10 out of 10 on the simplicity scale. Uh, basically just change the network adapter to one which isn't assigned and the way to check is to just hit the start button I'll show you in the start menu here but I don't have it installed and all you have to type is virtual network editor and as you can see it won't come up in, in the VM because I don't have it installed I don't have VMware installed in a VM because that's just silly <laughs> but if you do that you can see which network adapters have been assigned and from there you can just pick one which isn't assigned and go for that remember to enable that DHCP service because for a long time I wondered why I weren't getting IPs and DHCP is obviously the protocol which gives out IPs to uh, devices on your network and uh, yeah that's basically how I lay out my hacking lab and then from here you've essentially got a completely separate network and uh, you don't risk damaging any of your computers <laughs> So I hope that's helped you out there, Colin and anyone else who may have wanted to know how I uh, set off my closed networks. F f as of now, VirtualBox doesn't have this feature. It doesn't have any virtual networking support, aside from like the host only and bridged. So if you actually want this feature in VirtualBox, um, you're probably going to have to install... No, I don't think there's any way you could do it apart from physically disconnecting your host from the network via Ethernet or disconnect your wireless adapter. So VMware is definitely the way to go, especially if you have a more powerful PC. VMware is definitely the way to go because it allows you to run multiple VMs very easily so you can tab through. So enough about VMware. Um, if I haven't said it already, I hope this helps you call in. Uh, he contacted me via Twitter and if you didn't already know, I actually have a Twitter now. Um, it's just up here at Demsec. Uh, if you want to have a conversation with me or anything like that, it's much easier contacting me through Twitter because YouTube is kind of the way it does it is kind of convoluted. And ha I have multiple YouTube accounts and I'm having to sign in and out to chat to people. 
doesn't really work out too well to me. So to me, <laughs> for me. So if you want, I don't know. Maybe if it's more urgent support that you need, in Twitter is definitely the way to go because I always have Tweet Deck open. Uh, and even if it's just you want to send a kind remark, I will talk to pretty much everyone on Twitter because it really is that easy. So I hope everyone's enjoyed this video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and remember to hit that like button if you have liked the video. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. If you like our videos, why not register over at our forums www.demsec.co.uk There you can find other tutorials submitted by community members. You can also ask myself and other members questions. I'll see you over there.